So I'm gonna guess you're here because you're focused on becoming financially free, or at the very least, become rich. In fact, like most people, I've been interested in being rich all my life, but it's only in the past three or four years that I've actually started to build wealth. Now, I've always worked hard. I'm a self-confessed workaholic, but what did I do wrong for the previous 30 years? I had no money. But more importantly, what have I been doing differently the past three or four years? Well, in a nutshell, I've changed all my habits around money and replaced them with new ones that I have learned from rich or successful people. But I didn't just change them. I completely reset my thinking around money and put systems in place to do the heavy lifting. After all, like you, my life is already very busy. I don't need to add any more workload to it. So here they are, my eight money mistakes that I replaced with good financial habits. Each one of them was a ticking time bomb on my finances, particularly the last two. They clean me out every single month. In hindsight, it's no wonder I didn't get anywhere with my finances. Okay, let's get into it. And the first one is one we can all relate to. Living above your means. So the first way I was losing money each month is because I was spending it all. I didn't save any of my salary. I certainly didn't invest it. I didn't even know what investing was. I basically paid everybody else first and I didn't pay myself. Now we'll all go into this in more detail in chapter three, but fundamentally I wasn't living below my means. I was spending more than I was earning. And I found if you're spending everything that you earn, it's very hard to break that cycle. For example, living expenses rarely go down. They only go up. So if you're spending more than you're earning, you're eventually gonna creep more and more into debt and that's gonna cause you big financial problems. So you need to make changes. And living below your means literally asks you to spend less than you earn. It's like weight loss. We can give all the reasons why the weight isn't shifting, but in most cases, for most of us, it's literally calories in, calories out. And it's the same with your salary. You literally have to spend less than you earn to live below your means. Less living costs, less travel, and less shopping costs. Change your financial habits to change your outgoings. It's that simple. And if you can get your living expenses and all your financial responsibilities down to 90% of your salary, you are doing awesome. Cutting back, the sparsity mindset. Now living below your means is an excellent financial habit that most people should adopt. But having a focus on cutting back at the expense of taking a risk and making more income may be going a step too far. By adopting a scarcity mindset and working on saving a few dollars here and there, I would argue it's better to take a calculated risk to increase your income. Instead of spending some of my time to do some low cost labor to save a few dollars, I can invest that time to an online business or giving high skill lessons to people that need it. So if you can earn 40 to $80, why would you do a task that would only cost you 20 to $30? The scarcity mindset is when you believe that there are limited resources to work with. As Mitsui states in his 2022 report, the scarcity mindset drives behaviors focused on hoarding, competition, and self-preservation. So cutting back to save the pennies may lead you to losing out to adding hundreds of dollars to your salary. So I say, don't let the scarcity mindset fool you into withdrawing your efforts in building a good salary. After all, we all know you can only save so much. The earning potential is endless. With the right attitude and a bit of confidence, you can even negotiate a pay rise at work, but we'll dive deeper into that in chapter six. For now, more importantly, why is it I always got paid last? Getting paid last. Now I was an absolute champ at this habit and I did it so well. The rule is simple, spend all your money each month and leave nothing behind. And if you wanna be an Olympic champ, spend on your credit card and don't pay off the full balance. That is gold level material in a bad financial habit category. Now on a serious note, I always knew I should put a bit of my salary away and was reminded and encouraged by my parents to do so. But I would give myself a get out of jail free card every month. I would put some money aside in my savings if I had anything left after paying my bills, going out and enjoying myself and buying myself a few treats. This bad habit is one of the worst ones you can adopt and you need to dispose of it as soon as possible. To build wealth, to secure your financial future, you have to pay yourself first every single month as soon as you get paid, five to 15% or whatever you can afford should go into your investment account every month. It's the only way of getting ahead financially, making small contributions to your investment and building that up over time. Prioritize making yourself richer, not others. And if you don't put yourself first, guess what? You'll find a way of spending the money next month and you won't save again. Treat your saving investing just like another expense. It has to be paid every month. Not investing large sums. How many people do you know, friends or family, that are sitting with a large stash of cash in their bank account? 
the money just sitting there, earning less than 0.5% interest, literally eroding away to inflation. Maybe you are one of those people. It could be $10,000 or even $80,000. It could be a windfall, but in most cases I've seen, it's people saving money over a long period of time. And that's usually the problem. They've been saving and sacrificing for so long, they are absolutely paralyzed to know what to do with it. They are looking for the best place to invest in, with the least risk and the best return. And because of that, their paralysis has caused zero action. So the money sits there, unfulfilled and wasting away to inflation. But in order to grow the money, and it's there to be grown, it has to be put into circulation and invested. Now, as part of our property portfolio, we regularly borrow money from our investors to invest in our properties and to renovate them. It's a win-win situation. They get a great return and we get all the capital that we need. And that's the beauty of investment. They can be short-term or long-term, depending on your goals. The money can be invested into a business, on low-cost index funds on the stock market, or even GICs, whatever the vehicle. The cash needs to be put into an investment and work for you, not languishing in a bank account. And in my humble opinion, bank accounts are the worst, as we're gonna find out in the next chapter. Bank accounts. Okay, first of all, nobody should be paying for their bank account. I don't know why this is a thing or accepted by millions of people. The bank is literally taking your deposits, lending out to make money and charging you a fee for the pleasure. Second of all, the charges. Banks make a fortune from us. They are literally taking money out of your pocket. Overdraft fees, ATM fees, annual fees, even paperwork fees. I ordered a paper statement from the teller and I was charged $6.50. My suggestion? Move to an online bank. There are dozens of them these days and most of them have little or no fees at all. They have better interest earned on money in your account and better credit card rates. Now the problem here is traditional banks with their fees and charges know people very well. They know people don't like change and they don't want extra work. Move into another bank, an online bank seems like too much hassle for the average person. The banks know we complain, but in the end, most of us stay put. So do yourself a favor and do your money a favor and find a better deal. Sit down and work out how much you will save over one year on fees, charges and other costs. Add them up and see if it comes to enough for a small vacation. Then treat yourself every year as a reward for making all those savings. So go get your money. It's yours, not the bank's. Not asking for a pay rise. When is the last time you asked for a pay rise? And I'm not referring to that microscopic one hidden under your performance review. I mean a proper pay rise, a substantial one. If it's been a while, this is something you need to look into. Now I know it can be a difficult thing and maybe a bit uncomfortable, but it doesn't need to be. We can choose it to be a necessity, a challenge that will lead to a substantial cash reward. You can compile the evidence as to why you've earned the pay rise and the extra value you will bring to the table going forward. Detail how much of an asset you are and the experience you bring. I've found over the years that people will complain about their job and complain about the place of work, but they will rarely ask for a pay rise or try and move themselves forward. Now, if you took the time to put together the evidence and pose a question, they can only say yes or no. And if they pass over you and say no, there's always job hopping. Go offer your services to a competitor and see where that lands. In fact, some people do that every three to five years and they can earn up to 30% more salary by doing that. So go speak to your boss, get what you deserve and give them every reason to keep you. You are awesome. Go get the salary you deserve. Buying in bulk. If you're a contractor like me, you know the financial benefit of buying things in bulk. We get a nice discount on plywood, on drywall, on paint when we purchase in volume. We save money and it's substantial and it brings that cost per item right down. The same goes for food and groceries. We love saving money and buy things in bulk, but we don't buy everything in bulk. For example, I will buy chicken breasts by the dozen. I can freeze some for later and enjoy that great item price for weeks to come. But that won't work for items like milk. I would also limit the bulk buys and spread the costs over the year, not all at once. I have a set budget each month to buy things. So blowing it all on a year's supply of toilet roll doesn't make sense. Now for much of our grocery list, we'll hit Walmart or Costco for those big bulk items. For fruit and veg, we tend to get higher quality, but we'll always source the best price. We will also enjoy seasonal fruit and veg as they lose you a great bulk price like corn and apples. And avoiding those big brand names usually pushes the value even more. Now as a growing family of five, we get through a lot of food. We all have packed lunches, snacks, treats, and hot drinks, all prepared at home. 
Now, obviously, we have dinner at home too. And if my wife and I go to the gym, we'll have another meal later at night. Now, almost all of this food is fresh, wholesome, good for you food. We eat good and healthy food every single day. It's not expensive and it provides our bodies with all the nutrients and goodness they need. Now, we do have to spend time planning and chopping, cooking and preparing, but it is so worth it. We save a lot of money on food and we get to eat healthy food that our bodies need. This is a solid investment. Turning a blind eye. Of course, something we are almost all guilty of is turning a blind eye to our bad finances and our bad habits. I mean, who wants to tackle money issues? They are stressful and add nothing to our life but worry. It could be all those bank fees eating up our money each month. Or it could be the credit card bill that's building every month because we're only paying the minimum balance. Life gets busy and it seems every month something else comes up. So what do we do? We turn our blind eye. We kick the can of our finances down the road to deal with it another day. But the thing is, that day never comes and our money problems don't get tackled. We avoid the discomfort of dealing with them. And this prolongs the long-term worry and stress, as well as building more debt upon debt in the way of interest charges and fees. So we need new habits to stop us from turning a blind eye and be more responsible with these tasks. So my suggestion is do a monthly planner and spread these tasks out so you're only doing one or two tasks every other day. Lessen that feeling of dread and associate a small reward when you complete the task. Maybe a good quality coffee or a chocolate bar, and set up some alerts on your phone to remind you to do the tasks. Don't let bad financial habits make you feel overwhelmed and stressed. It's time to take back some control with some good, solid habits. It will feel strange at first, but I promise you, you'll feel better for it and it will improve your life. Thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate you. If you found some value in today's video, perhaps give me a thumbs up and subscribe below. I've got more videos coming down the line and I don't want you to miss any of them. In the meantime, I've got a great video here on why rich people dress down and dress boring. I'll see you there.